Oh well. Well, I want to give you a little background on me. My father had a jewelry store. I grew up there. I was practically, ra I was actually raised there, and I was always interested in the art. I was always interested in metal. This is something I discovered long after my father's shop was closed, and it's called Mokumegane. I made these rings. Mokumegane is a way of contra layering contrasting metals, fusing them together to create. I'm sorry, there we go. To create a pattern, what's called a pattern weld. Now, this is done by achieving contrast through some means. Usually, um, Mokumegane is made from either different colored precious metals or silver and a different colored base metal such as brass or copper or even bronze. I happen to work in both 18 karat and silver. These rings right in front of you are made completely from silver. Well, two different grades. One of them, uh, one of the grades being fine silver or pure 999. And the other grade being 800 silver, also 80% uh, Basically, a silver, excuse me, a silver alloy of 80% pure silver, 20% pure copper. Now, the material for making these is really all in front of you right here. This being pure copper. Wheat penny. Forgive my fingernails. Dirty hands and clean results, I always say. Anyway, pure copper and pure silver. Alloyed. Drawn into sterling silver, 800 silver, any grade you'd like, just depending on the ratio. We, we'll get into that later. I'll show you how to mix your own alloys. So you take layers of pure silver and 800 silver. Now, as you can see, the 800 silver is clearly a different color, even though they're both, you know, essentially the same material. This one is an alloy. That's a pure metal. When all is said and done, not these strips, of course, but layers of the metal would be fused together. After being stacked, so you'd stack them, fuse them together. Once they're fused, in to get fused together, everything is forged out into a rod. The rod is then milled into a piece of, uh, well, I would call this a blank. This piece of stock material will later become anything we desire. We can make uh, any, any type of jewelry you can imagine with that piece of silver. Now, I know it, at this point it does not look like Makumegane, but with very light patterning and a little ingenuity, it's quite easy to achieve that effect. I only polished one side uh, clean after I put on the patina. It's not even a patina. This is actually oxidation. What I do is by making the 800 silver oxidized by applying heat under the right under pretty much any form of direct heat, 800 silver will quickly start to turn jet black. Now, fine silver, on the other hand, will not oxidize under any circumstances. So the fine silver essentially just gets cleaner. And what you are left with is a very, very unique looking silver candy cane. This can easily be made for what I do is band rings. These make incredible wedding bands. And when I'm feeling really creative, I have a few different designs. My snakes are my one of my favorite. What you have here is an 800 fine silver Makumegani snake ring. It has 14 karat gold eyes. Um, it's a classic star pattern, which I'm going to be demonstrating in this video more or less how to achieve. And it's solid silver all the way through. Uh, this is one of my better pieces, so this is why I'm showing that one. But um, these videos are going to become... I'll start from the beginning in my next set, but as of right now... We're just at the point where I will be demonstrating how to get the basic form of turning a Mikunigane rod and twisting it up into a Mikunigane uh, piece of material. We're going to be doing that today. So hang tight, and we'll be back. Okay. So once again, I'm not going to be using flux, and I'm not going to be pickling this piece. Um, when I'm done, it's going to be ready for twisting. Uh, twisting something, especially multiple layered pieces like this, is very, very stressful. If it's not completely softened up, you're going to have a very hard time. Next, we're not we're going to do this in a particular way. We're going to make the molecules of the crystalline structure move from front to, from back to front and get everything going in the way we need. So, once again, I'm using the plumber's torch. 
Don't go back and forth like this. That will put too much heat in the center and not enough on the ends. Because if you really think about it, for every pass, the center is getting two hits. Go around in a circle. Start at the end. Cover the entire piece evenly. If you do it like this, if your angle is off, my angle is definitely off right now. If your angle is off and you're bleeding heat out, it doesn't matter. The entire piece is getting hit the same exact way. You should obviously do this as efficiently as possible, but doing it evenly is most important. Now, as you can see, we're starting to get a color. This does take some skill. You need to get this very hot. And you need to keep it at a consistent temperature a little bit longer than normal with silver. And you need to quench immediately. The goal here is to get this thing so soft and then freeze the molecules in place as quickly as possible. You see how it's an even color. That is the most important thing. It's also a cherry red. I'm going to get it. That's ready. It needs to be held here for dead soft, held here for 10 seconds more. I would say 30 seconds. Once you hit that, that spot, 25, 30 seconds, hold it there evenly. Don't let the temper variation, uh, temperature variate. And then quench quickly. Okay. Turn the light back on. Okay, we're going to be putting this in the vise and twisting it up. We're going to be using the section without teeth right there, obviously. So, now, really not much about this, and I'm going to show you that you probably can't figure out on your own. I'm just going to give you, I guess, some wisdom on some things that I've learned the hard way, so you don't have to. Alright, um, so yeah, we have the, the no teeth on that end, but we've gone above and beyond that. This was a great idea. Locking jaw pliers, ground flat. So what we essentially have is locking really tight parallel pliers won't mar the metal up. This is ultra important for just about every reason, but especially with Makumegane, you rip into the layers and it's a mess. So, oh good, he shut the vacuum off. Okay, so what we're going to do, I got a guy upstairs polishing. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab it, even though we have the thing flattened out and cleaned, we're gonna use leather. So we're gonna grab it. Make sure we got a good grip. Uh, we do not. do and gently so I've watched guys do this really fast slow is fast remember that gently twist and a little more leverage on inside the vise gently and slowly twist you have to, if you have to correct, if you have to switch positions, do it. Don't risk the Mikume. I mean, don't risk the Mikume. Keep adjusting the tools. Now, I do this ultra slowly. I, you can go a lot faster. I do it ultra slowly because I want to hear and feel and see anything that might occur. Any vibration, any twing, any noise at all. Anything that sounds like a string snapping, any delaminations, anything at all, okay? And I anneal constantly. So, I'm going to take that out. Sorry about the focus. And so, there you go. And now we're going to take that. It's not time to anneal it. It's, probably, it's still ready to, I'm going to anneal it anyway. I'll be back. Okay, it's back in. I actually think with these jaws, I can bypass the leather, so we're gonna try that. Actually, yeah, it's working a lot better. I want a nice, aggressive twist on this one. So, we're gonna really... I 
Now, sometimes you gotta move your way up the chain, twist it from the end. Feel free. Oh, that works great. Normally, these bite the hell out of it. One more kneel, and I think we're good. I'm gonna do it one more time. Alright, and last time, this will be the lightest amount. I'm not gonna really. I just want one more for good pressure. Okay, I'm happy with that. And this is what I mean by different movement. So you have a little breakage there. It's okay. I mean, you got to file into it, clean it up, hammer it flat, do what you got to do. It's not a delamination at this point. It's just one of the top layers coming loose. Theoretically, it's a delamination, but it's only surface. It's going to be easily fixed. I'll get into all that also. I will show my entire method here. I'm not just a Makumegane maker. I'm a fan. I want to see more of it. No, it's not. So let me clean my hands up. Clean this thing up a little bit. Hammer it flat, and that'll be the end of this video. Stay tuned. Okay, basically, do some hammering, get this flat, ready for the mill. No matter what, clean, smooth, striking surfaces, and go go. Okay. do this into a, a square so okay now it's got two flat sides now let's give it four flat sides Try to do this even You have to do this even more. Okay, it's got an overall square shape now, and now I'll be able to just easily flatten it out, doing one side at a time. One side, turn, one side, turn, one side, turn, one side, turn. Need to make sure it's flat when you're hitting it and not to let it jump. Movement is bad. If you feel it moving, steady it before you hit it again. I'm doing it this way. You force it 
into a square shape. Okay, we're gonna refine this a little more and then we'll head to the mill. And there you have it, fresh out of the mill, all cleaned up. It is now basically a square rod. Not all cleaned up, I still have to do a significant amount of sanding on that. Um, which I might as well go ahead and record. I'll hyperlapse it because it's going to take a while. Once all the sanding is done, we'll do some curling, shaping this. I'll show you what I'm going to make. All right, be back. All right. I'm going to be using 220 and 3, no, 220 and just 400 for an hour. Yeah, it does get hot. <laughs> There's going to be a problem. You want to know about it now. So that's what you're going for. You want a nice, clean, clean, smooth finish. No holes, no pits. No obvious cracks. If there are, fix them. Hammer them flat. Move them around. Move the metal around. That's your job. You're a smith. Right. And if you're not, learn how. I will put videos up for any purpose that you might need. But for this, and you know, for this particular video. All right. Let's go to the next one.
let's see how we did. Don't melt the wire. I'd call that a su yeah, that's a success. We did it. Yeah, for now that'll do. Well, we need to, you know, obviously keep sanding and finishing as we go along, but that is it. That's the uh, pretty much all you need. Workable Makumagane. So Get it a little darker just for just for fun. There we go. You can see a nice dark pattern has arrived. So what we're gonna make out of that will be in the next video. But it's gonna be interesting. So, if you're interested in, in making Mukumagane, if you're interested in this type of just aspect, and if you're still watching, then I'm sure you am, definitely hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, pass it along, uh, share it, and feel free to leave a comment letting me know what you'd like to see regarding this, anything that's really silver metalworking. For the next couple weeks, it's going to be Mukumagane only, but um, feel free to leave comments and send me messages or questions. I'll be more than happy to dem demonstrate... Anything that you might be having an issue with relating to silver, especially torch and heat connection issues. So, once again, thanks for watching, and uh, tune in next time. And we're going to get to, also, just to let you know, I'm going to be having some videos, a lot of them actually, uh, showing not just how the billet is twisted, how from the raw material, the copper, silver, from that right there, we will easily make what you're looking at here. Alright, that will all be covered. So, come back, tune in. Talk to you then.